Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Noelle and I do unboxings here. Mostly lifestyle subscription boxes, but also some stationery, books, beauty, jewelry, and even a dash of Disney. So if you like unboxings, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell. And as always, if you are already subscribed, thanks again so much for being here and welcome back. Today I have my October Once Upon a Book Club adult selection. Yes, October. To be fair, they have been a little bit behind as well. I do have my November box. Box. I don't have my December box yet though because I know they've been busy trying to move into a new warehouse and getting the advent boxes and New Year's Eve boxes out so I totally understand those delays. It'll give me a little chance I think to catch up. If you're not familiar with Once Upon a Book Club, it is a very unique book subscription. They do some little hints ahead of time but it is a surprise book. Everyone gets the same book. It's $34.99 plus about $10 in shipping and what they do is they put little notes with in the book and then it tells you to open the corresponding gift so it really does bring the book to life because there's items that actually appear within the novels now sometimes I feel like they take a little bit of liberty and it's not exactly what would have appeared in the book and sometimes there's a little branding that goes on where it says like once upon a book club on there um, sometimes there's like what we call paper gifts which I don't feel like really are useful items so I think they've been moving a little bit away from the paper items which is great I'd rather have like three really solid functional usable gifts without a lot of branding on them versus like having four to five and some of them are paper gifts or ones that I won't use because it says like the title of the book or it has a quote on it from the book that makes it seem a little strange to use in real life but you'll see what I'm talking about now, if you're interested in subscribing, I have two ways for you to save money. There's a link in the description box below that will save you $5, or you can use the code MauiNoel10 and that will save you 10% up to you, whichever one works better, depending on what sort of level of subscription you would like to do if you are wanting to try this out. I do think some of the books that are coming up look pretty good. I will tell you guys that I was very excited to read this book. It has been getting such great reviews in the Once Upon a Book Club uh, forum over on Facebook and just in general in like the book world. So I was really excited about this book and I think that it made my expectations a little bit too high. And uh, spoiler alert, I was a little bit disappointed by the gifts, not because I didn't feel like they corresponded with the book, just um, you'll see what I'm talking about as we go through. Now I am going to go ahead and read little excerpts where the notes in the book are. So if you haven't already gotten to this and you have this box, I would not watch the rest of this video because I will be showing what you what those gifts are. But in the box, you receive, like I said, like three to four wrapped gifts usually, and they all have like the page numbers on there. So you can kind of go through right away when you receive the box, even if you don't get started right away to make sure you have everything in there. They also always include a little like quote card, which I think is kind of nice. I know a lot of people like to use these as like home decor, put them in one of those little like clipboards or something. And I actually really liked the quote. Uh, the book this time is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. So we just got this nice paperback and the concept is really cool. And the quote that we got says, the only way to learn is to live, which is something I do agree with. And I do like that sentiment in, in the book. So that's a nice little quote card. They have also moved, they used to have like kind of a brochure pamphlet and now it's like this full size thing because it does really work like a book club where they have different opportunities to talk to the author. In the past uh, recent books, we've actually gotten a little letter from the author and I didn't actually see that in this one, which I kind of missed, but we did get like a little conversation with the author in here, as well as some like discussion questions if you're someone who really likes those elements of a book club. And then they have like read along dates and like unboxing dates, but I feel like everything's been a little bit thrown off by their delayed shipping lately. On the back, I thought it was interesting. They just have this whole like sheet that says my list of regrets for you to like fill out um, but you'll see why I think that's an interesting uh, choice to include there on that pamphlet and I feel like they could have just put something else there even if it was like an ad for once upon a book club but let's go ahead and talk about the book a little bit so um, it says a dazzling novel about all the choices that go into a well a life well lived. Between life and death, there is a library. Up until now, now, Nora Seed's life has been full of misery and regret. She feels she has let everyone down, including herself, but things are about to change. When she finds herself in the Midnight Library, she has a chance to make things right. The books in the Midnight Library enable Laura, Nora to live as if she had done things differently. Each one contains a different life, a possible world in which she had made different choices that played out in an infinite number of ways, affecting everyone she knew as well as 
as many people she never met. With the help of an old friend, she can now undo every decision she regrets as she tries to work out her perfect life. But things aren't always what she imagined they'd be, and soon her choices place the library and herself in extreme danger. Before time runs out, she must answer the ultimate question, what is the best way to live? So interesting premise, right? And it kind of goes along with some of the other books that we've received from Once Upon a Book Club this year with like Schrodinger's cat and this whole idea of like quantum physics and these like parallel lives. And I do like that idea of this like liminal space between life and death where you get to sort of examine your life, right? That's like a common trope. Um, so I thought the idea was really cool that you, there's all these, this li library with all these infinite, you know, it's like the sliding doors movie, like all these different choices you could have made. But I felt like, um, You'll see what I'm talking about, but I felt like the emphasis on like regret uh, is not necessarily something that I want to incorporate into my own life. Um, so it was an interesting story and it's like questions that I feel like we're all constantly asking all the time. The concept was really cool, but like I said, I feel like I just had like these like very, very high expectations um, and I found myself getting frustrated with the main character sometimes because she just like wasn't getting it. Like. Like, it just took a long time, I felt like, for her to, like, learn her lesson. It was almost like a Christmas carol sort of thing, like, appreciate the life you have and, like, just do better instead of spending time on uh, thinking about all the things you could have done differently because, honestly, you can't change those things, so there's no point in really regretting them. You move forward and try to do better. Um, that was kind of, like, the moral of the story, and it was one of those things where I felt like she should have gotten it a little bit sooner, but instead we just got the opportunity to kind of follow her along, like sliding into all of these different lives and what ifs. But, you know, I, I just feel like there's, you, there's so little time that we have that we can't spend a ton of time on what ifs, uh, should haves. You can't like should have all over yourself, right? So anyway, let's go ahead and read. We had four different gifts. Um, and the first one came on page 34. And I do really appreciate when there is like a gift early in the book. Like sometimes when there's not, not one for like hundreds of pages, it's kind of like, it takes a little while. And one of the reasons I like this subscription and this concept is because having like this, this gift that I'm anticipating helps me uh, keep reading, especially if it's like a slow start. I didn't feel like that with this book. I, I definitely uh, was into it. I didn't like have to like make myself pick it back up. But sometimes that's why I like having the gifts a little bit early on. So uh, she is now in the library. She's in between life and death. She's sort of like figuring out how it works and everything. Um, and the uh, librarian that's kind of guiding her along has shown her this, this book of regrets. And it says, Nora stared at it. She could see it now, the small typeface embossed on the cover. So then it's got this little post-it note that says, open your gift. So um, I do like their wrapping, their packaging, you guys, I always think is so on point. So this is uh, the wrapping that we we had and I really appreciate this because this was actually like wrapped like a gift and it's really pretty right but they have this printed on here but it's actually paper so um, it wasn't like printed on the box and I do think they do such nice printed boxes you'll see one later but I'm always kind of bummed that they have like a page number printed on it um, because then I can't really reuse it because it doesn't make sense to like give that to somebody else all right so I'm gonna go ahead and slide that out so this is to me like a glorified paper gift. So it's this box that actually says the book of regrets on it, which is like something I just don't really want to have in my house. Um, but it is like kind of like a book spine, right? So you can put it in your bookshelf. But I just think it's kind of weird to have a box in your house that says the book of regrets. It's, and then stuff like this, where it's like actually like kind of well made, like it's a nice cardboard box. Like I feel bad throwing this away, you know, but at the same time, like when you're trying to like get rid of clutter in your house, I'm not gonna keep it. So it's got like this nice closure, right? So it opens up and then inside you guys, there's no book of regrets. It's an empty box, which I mean, I hope your your book of regrets is also empty. Um, but here's our like glorified paper gift. So it says open at the end of the next chapter. All right, so then you have to go back to the book and then you read until the end of the next chapter. And it's basically like her, you know, going through this this other life. And some of the lives she slips into, she's there for a few minutes and some of them she's there for a few days. So inside it says the book of regrets challenge. And it says, dear reader, take some time and on small slips of paper, write down every regret you've ever had. Um, that's a challenge. I'm not, and even in the book, like some of her regrets are like, didn't work out on that day. So it's like from the smallest little regrets up to like the big, like life changing moments. It says, write down every regret you've ever had since the day you were born and toss each one of them into your book of regrets, your box. 
While reading, every time Nora finishes one of her regrets, take a slip of paper at random and reflect on how your life would have turned out to be had you followed through with that particular opportunity. Imagine the best and then imagine the worst. Then close your eyes and let it go. So I really did not like this. I thought that was kind of ridiculous to ask us to sit down and take the time to write out all of our regrets since the day we were born. And then every time Nora finishes one of her lives to then spend more time thinking about the best possibility and the worst possibility, which again, there's no way for us to know. So what's the point in us like dwelling on that? And then to close our eyes and let it go. It was like this weird like self-help challenge. And by the way, like the book is not that long. It's only 288 pages or so and like she goes through a lot of lives and at one point she goes she just like lists them but even so like if I listed every single regret if they're as small as like not eating healthier on a given day there would be way more regrets in my box than the one the lives that she goes through in the book so I'd wind up having a whole bunch of them still left over so it just didn't seem like that well thought out in terms of the instructions. Like maybe one regret, maybe come up with one regret and write it on your slip of paper and you can let that go. And that was like pretty much on the back of like the pamphlet, right? You could have like done that if you really wanted to have like that element of the book, like speaking to your life. But in the end, like I'm not going to take the time to do that. I, there's no point in me trying to like wonder what, what would have happened if I had worked out yesterday versus if I hadn't like the worst possibility um, because you, you, there's just no way to know that butterfly effect and then I just have this empty box with a bunch of slips of paper which seems like a waste of paper and a box so I in case you can tell you guys I was disappointed by this first gift I mean even if they had just given us a box but not printed the words the book of regrets on it then okay then I have this nice like keepsake box that I can use for all of the other like stuff that I receive where I just need a little like nice neat storage thing that would have been fine but like I just feel like this is like emphasizing like negativity even though I know that the exercise that the, the challenge that they gave us is trying to get us away from that but anyway so I had high hopes I was like you know what can't get worse than that so we're gonna hopefully get another better gift along the way so the next one I think came on page 131 so this is from another life uh, so she's actually like a glaciologist I believe and she, so she's like in the Arctic doing stuff and she actually comes across a polar bear so a little like lost situation here it says the bear stood and stared the way the walrus had she glanced at the rifle yes it was too far away by the time she could grab it and work out how to fire it it would already be too late she doubted she'd be able to kill a polar bear anyway so she banged the ladle so she has this ladle to like make noise to try to scare the polar bear away so okay so she's banging a ladle uh, to scare the polar bear away like spoiler alert she gets away from the polar bear um so here it is and this was like kind of a bummer because I do go through my box to make sure that I have all the gifts but because this one was just in this like sack and again it's like got the page number printed on it so it's weird to use it for anything else I could already feel what it was uh, so I knew there was a ladle so as soon as like the ladle appeared in in the book like well before the, the sticky note I knew that's what it was all about this at least is a functional gift so okay I appreciate that and this is where you can see some of the detail that they do go through. So they actually have like a little quote here on this on this little um, card. It says she fell to her knees and started clanging the ladle against the saucepan and shouted at the top of her lungs, bear, bear, bear. So I do think that's kind of cute. And it's kind of like this copper handle and this just like plastic um, teal, which kind of matches some tongs that we got from another another book box, which I think is kind of fun. So it's a ladle that you could definitely use. Um, not with like super hot stuff because it's it's still plastic but at least this was a functional gift and it did it did go along with the book even though this is probably not the kind of ladle that she would have had in the arctic to scare away a bear um but this was a better gift so i was like all right there there's that <laughs> So then the next time we found a little sticky note was on page 195 so she uh, has this thing where the reason the librarian is there helping her in the midnight library is because there was a library that was a librarian that was influential in her past or her current life, her root life. It says, look at the chessboard we put back in place, said Mrs. Elm softly. Look at how ordered and safe and peaceful it looks now before a game starts. It's a beautiful thing, but it's boring and it's and it's dead. And yet the moment you make a move on that board, things change. Things begin to get more chaotic and that chaos builds with every single move you make because there's so 
many different permutations that you can take in a chess game. So I was excited about this one. And this came in a very nice box that again has printed on it page 195. Um, I wish they would just do like stickies on the boxes again so that if I did want to re-gift this to someone they wouldn't see that it came from a book box right like if they can do stickies in the in the books then I feel like they could do stickies on the boxes. Uh, so inside, probably you already guessed, it is a chess set, which I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I don't have a chess set because I don't play chess. I've always wanted to learn. And every time I try to like sit down and learn, I fail because it's definitely something that takes some like major mental effort. But maybe it's something that I, I was like, oh, maybe I'll like finally take up chess in all of my spare time that doesn't exist. So it is nice. Um, it's like a wooden case and it's, it's, you know, I clipped it open. Now I, when I did open it up, like uh, it was like rattling around because a lot of the pieces had come loose from this like foam, but they are like nestled in there and they are wood, which I thought was nice. They're not like plasticky pieces. So that was kind of cool. But then I like looked at the actual board, you guys, and it's just like, it's not actually like, you know, wood inlay which I understand would be really expensive it's just a sticker and I don't think you guys can see but here there's these like creases in my chess board so it's like it looks a little janky and it's on both sides there's like bubble like ripples and stuff so it's not like the nicest chess board it's not something that I would like really want to have out in my house and it even has a quote there in the corner it says the game is never over until it's over Matt Haig so I was kind of like well I mean I guess it's a good like learner thing but it's definitely again something I can't Really like re-gift to someone else because it's randomly got a quote from the book on it and it's just like the execution is like it's got these like ugly creases in it which I was like super bummed about so um, not like the greatest quality and that's one of those situations where I'm like I know like this is not a super expensive box for getting a book and then gifts and then all of the time it takes them to like put all the sticky notes into the books I realize it's like you know I can only ask for so much but I would have way rather them put the money into a slightly nicer quality chess board than the money that definitely went into having these book of regrets boxes printed up right so that was like a personal preference where I like I would have rather had three like quality gifts instead of one that's like lower quality that I'm probably not going to hold on to and that I don't have a really good way of passing on to someone else. So we've got one more gift and that came on page 266 and it just says um Mrs. Elm placed a hand above the desk and hastily rummaged for something. A second later, she was handing Nora an orange plastic fountain pen, the kind Nora had owned at school, the one she had noticed ages ago. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and shocker. It's pen sized. Um, again, a little like bag that I wish didn't have the number printed on it. So we've got our orange pen. Um, and it's just a like clicker pen. It is not a fountain pen and um, Later in the book she even like talks about how she's like trying to get the cap off But this is a clicker pen. It doesn't have a cap So in, if you're gonna like put the pen from the book in there Then I feel like it should match a little bit more and it does have a quote on the side It says you don't have to understand life. You just have to live it. So same quote um, This is like one of those little like nibbies so you can like use it as a stylus, which is fine I personally don't like these kinds of pens I'm like really picky though about the kinds of like ink pens that I use it's got like a nice grip It doesn't feel like a cheap pen. I, I appreciate like the rubberized like grip and everything So this was like another good function gift I wouldn't have been upset about it um, but it, it still didn't like really fit the book itself and I thought that there were a lot of other areas in the book where they could have uh, had fun gifts there's a lot of like animals named after philosophers because she's like a big philosophy buff and everything and I just felt like there were other like gifts or little like nods that would have been more useful or made more sense to me so all in all you guys I thought the book was good I didn't like I wasn't falling all over myself for it the way I feel like some people are on the Facebook group it was good it had good questions um, you know like the characters were likable the concept was interesting uh, but I felt like the gifts this time were really honestly disappointing mostly just half of them I was disappointed obviously by the book of regrets box I think glorified paper gift is my best description of it 
bummer about the like quality of the chessboard that could just be mine hopefully everybody else got nice chessboards without a bunch of bubbles in them but overall i just thought it could have been better so fingers crossed i've got the next box ready to go and hopefully it will be a better one let me know if you guys liked this video if you like this book if you like these gifts and hopefully i will see you all very very soon in my next unboxing